Big points discussion coming into the regular season Cup Series finale at Daytona National Speedway this Saturday night. You've got the regular season championship at stake. That's 15 playoff points. Right now, Martin Truex Jr. leading by 39 points in the regular season point standings over Denny Hamlin. And then you've got 5th through 12th separated by 38 points. There's playoff points at stake for all of those positions. Those playoff points, of course, go through each round. So very, very valuable. Very important to want to finish in the top 10 of the regular season point standings. So I'll start with you, Parker. Uh, who do you like for the regular season championship? And what do you expect from that 5th through 12th paddle? Because you got some surprises there, like Kyle Busch, multiple victories this season, but right now outside that playoff point bonus for a, a top 10 regular season points finish. Well, I think Martin Truex Jr. has basically got this, you know, in hand for the regular season championship, unless he is to have a catastrophic issue here at Daytona early in the race, potentially then Denny can go up there and obviously score a lot of points. But Martin Truex, that 19 team have really just lit up this summer, right? And they've put themselves in this position to, to have a great spot entering the playoffs and they've earned it right now. Denny, I like this. I, I, I can't help but smirk a little bit. I know he said this on his podcast this week, but he'd love to have those 25 points back from back in Phoenix, admitting that he had put the uh, the one in the wall, right? So he would be right there in the thick of this and be in the, the battle for this uh, regular season championship, maybe the little closer battle than they have right now. But I, yeah, I think right now, Martin Truex Jr. and the 19 team basically have this in, in hand. Now, if you look at that battle, as you put it, from 6th to 12th, it is incredibly tight. Just a handful of points amongst all those drivers going into Daytona, a super speedway race with two points paying stages. I mean, this is going to fl- this is gonna flip all over the place throughout this race. Uh, but one that really sticks out to me in that list is all the way back in 11th, and that's Kyle Busch. I mean, just a couple weeks ago, that 8th team, I think, was sitting basically in 4th or 5th um, and even was in – contention even in midsummer for going out there for the regular season championship and has just fallen all the way back to sitting outside the top 10. So that's, that's got to hurt for them. Um, you know, I think that's really one of those, those, those last couple of weeks where they'll look at and say, okay, you know, even if we're, when we're in the playoffs, we've got to clean this up, whatever has happened here, because uh, you know, that is not a trend you want entering the playoffs. I think really what you see when you look at the regular season standings, I agree. I think uh, true X, should have the top wrapped up minus a big issue, but so many different agendas and so much still on the line, which is going to make everybody's job more difficult. You know, these conversations aren't mutually exclusive. So I think Truex doesn't change the style of racing, but that battle from six to 12 is going to put so much on the line for so many very fast race cars and fair, very impressive race teams that that makes Ty Gibbs job way harder to score enough points to overcome Bubba Wallace it makes any other new winner's job much more difficult because I think everyone that has already won races is going to be up there trying to battle it for points at the end of each stage to try to get that playoff point and to win the race. And really, that's the beauty of this format. While complicated, um, if you just sit back and don't worry about the details and just look at what it provides on the racetrack, you're going to see a race where everybody that takes a, the green flag has more than just a trophy in mind. They all have something else they're racing for, uh, and that's going to make Saturday night even more intense. Well, I think certainly there's going to be some moral dilemmas uh, possible here, Stevie, especially if, I mean, say Truex Jr. scores stage points early and the regular season championship is out the window. Then you have Denny Hamlin, who's you know pretty much locked in the second, and he discussed this on his podcast. You know, If he's got an opportunity to push Ty Gibbs to help him get a win for Gibbs versus pushing Bubba Wallace, who he owns his car at 2311 Racing and, and helping him either get a win or, or get in on points. I mean, I, to me, that's going to be magnified going into that final stage across the field where, you know, it's not just Denny Hamlin at Gibbs, it's William Byron or maybe even Larson at Hendrick. I mean, it just feels to me, Parker, I, I don't know how you feel about this as a driver, but to have all the other things you've got to worry about, all these other split second decisions you have to make in milliseconds, literally in the draft at Daytona to also be thinking and processing all that. It just seems like there's going to be a lot that possibly could be going on at the end of 400 miles at Daytona. No doubt. And you know, this is something I've struggled with personally as a driver, and that is being able to work with teammates at a super speedway as opposed to just being selfish and looking out for myself and my race team, uh, putting ourselves in the best position possible. And so I don't envy a lot of these drivers that are entering this race with those sorts of other things on their mind that they're having to pay attention to. And, you know, I think in years past, we've seen a lot of manufacturer loyalty, right? At these super speedway races. And over the last, it's gotten more and more over the last couple of years. I think when you look at 
Chevy, right? They are in an interesting position. You have numerous teammates who are in positions where amongst the Chevy cars, you know, their teammate is not in the playoffs. Although it's a Chevy, maybe they have a Chevy manufacturer, uh, you know, teammate in another team who's also not in the playoffs. So they've got to make those decisions as well. And I think that's going to make it tough for the Chevys to really link up. You think about a Ross Chastain and Daniel Suarez, obviously a William Byron and Chase Elliott or Alex Bowman. I mean, these, these are typically situations where there might be an all hands on deck, get this Chevy to the front and try to help them win a race. Well, I don't think that's the case here. So you're going to have a lot of, of, of objectives and agendas happening at the same time within this race. And that is a really tough thing to do. Uh, personally, I would probably just focus on me the best I possibly could and then hope it all sort of falls the way I need it to. <laughs> so, Parker, that's going to have you have a better race because I would be the guy in the meeting that reminds everyone this is the 26th race of the regular season. So if we think today in Daytona we're going to dream something up to get a car in the playoffs that we haven't been able to get in for 25 weeks, um, that would be enough. That would be the end of the meeting for me because there will be moments in – less chaos than normal where I would expect a driver would choose right. And whether that's a teammate or a similar manufacturer, that should just be a loyalty that's, you know, kind of embedded into your organization that it should be natural and it happens, but it should happen at the expense of no one. If the expense is, is, you know, at your car and you don't finish as well as you can, then what are we even talking about? I, like I'm so over these conversations of orchestrated planning of how we're going to run the race. Should we pit together? Yes. If you have a jump ball and Parker, you have a chance to push, you know, someone you're associated with where somebody you're not sure pick left or right, you know, pick, make the right choice. But other than that, it's 200 miles an hour. I will tell you this. I crew chief for Jeff Gordon and Dale jr. Both won speedway races uh, with me on top of the box. And every time both of them told their teammates at the green flag, Hey, sorry. And the teammates say, well, for what? He goes, I don't know. But somewhere in the next 500 miles, I'm going to really piss you off. So let's just get it out of the way now. Sorry, I'm going to do what I want to do. And they were two of the greatest at it. Danny Hamlin's that way. Joey Logano's that way. Um, so I, I get frustrated when we think that these guys have enough going on that they also can then you know, pick and choose who they're going to tow to the front with. Thank you for watching NASCAR America Motormouths, presented by Toyota. Hi, I'm Parker Kligerman. For more access like this from Pit Road, be sure to click and subscribe to the Motorsports and NBC YouTube channel.